Rarity upshifts. You might have heard the term floating around online. Hell, you might have seen this video and thought you'd click it, but you don't really know what the f**k's going on. In today's video, I'm going to explain what they are and whether you should care. This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. Use the code Kenobi at check out the link in the description below to get 5% off your order. It helps support the show. And if you order anything from Carl of Manor, singles or sealed product, you get an official, I say official, it's official to me and Cool Stuff, not to Magic, but um, I guess an unofficial. Either way, an exclusive Kenobi Orc Army token. Oh. Originally, as for the longest time in Magic, a booster pack was composed of 10 commons, four uncommons, and one singular rare. As time went on, a new rarity called Mythic was introduced, and the rares could be supplied with that in one in every four packs or so. I'm speaking generally here, I didn't write down the exact stats, it's been a long time since that stat was probably the correct one. Now, boosters look like this. They're called play boosters, and they have slots, and those slots have chances of stuff in them, and sometimes you get three rares in a pack. I'll be honest with you, I'm not gonna unpack all of this, that. Importantly, Ravnica Remastered isn't coming with play boosters. It's coming with traditional draft and collector boosters, I think. Is there set boosters too? God, it's so fucking hard to keep up. The reason I bring up Ravnica Remastered is because Ravnica Remastered is having two upshifted magic cards that has bothered people. Both Psychonic Rift and Guardian Project are both showing up in Ravnica Remastered because they're popular magic cards in Commander. Both cards were junk rares when they first came out. Guardian Project a little bit less so, but Psychonic Rift, although I was playing on day one in Commander because I was a filthy little bitch, Psychonic Rift was like a $1 card for the longest time. It used to be that when you opened a booster and got a Commander rare, you'd be like, oh, that's going to be good in Commander. And that means it's worth a dollar. Not like now where Psychonic Rift is, oh, that's good in Commander, and now it's worth 30 bucks. Coming in Ravnica Remastered now, we're getting Psychonic Rift and Guardian Project in Mythic Rare instead of Rare. This has pissed some people off and there's a good reason for that. It means that they're, they're not going to lower their prices as much as they could do if they print it Rare. So let's unpack that. So there are three reasons to change the rarity of a card to upshift or downshift. The first is for its limited potential, the second is for its overall price in the secondary market, and the third is for legality. Let's start with limited. So limited is the idea of opening packs and drafting, draft and sealed, right? Some cards are too good and limited. Famously, Psychonic Rift is one of the most powerful cards in RTR draft if you are at seven mana. So whilst getting to seven mana might be difficult if you get Boris aggroed out of the out of the game, if you get to seven mana and cast this card overloaded and bounce all your opponent's stuff, a one-sided bounce or board wrath is very, very powerful. So people don't want to get Psychonic Rift limited. It's one of the reasons to push up to Mythic. Meanwhile, Guardian Project is absolutely trash and limited. So pushing this up to Mythic is weird. The argument works for Psych Rift, but it doesn't work for Guardian Project. Pack Rat is the most famous example of this. This is the most powerful card in Limited from RTR. Full stop. This is way better than Psych Rift. It's way better than most things. It's a two mana threat that comes down if it can't be killed on the spot and make a second copy of itself, and then it's just impossible to get rid of. One of the most powerful limited rares of all time. To the point that people believed when a Ravnica got remastered, or if we ever had RTR remastered as a draft environment arena, they should remove Pack Rat. There's all of these one or two cards are too good. This, Sprout Swarm, arguably Invisible Stalker plus Butcher's Cleaver in the original Innistrad. There's always something that's maybe a little bit too much the best thing you can do in Limited. Opening a Pack Rat means you're probably going to 3-0 your draft. As you can tell, Pack Rat has not been shifted up to Mythic. It's a rare. I'm going to come back to that. Park that. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. Beyond changing rarities for limited, and this happens the other way around, by the way, some rares become uncommons in some draft sets just because they're not good enough to be rares. They thought they were good enough to be rares in their first iteration, they weren't, and now they're uncommons in other draft environments. You see that in powerful draft environments like Horizons or Masters sets. On my three prongs, price was next, but I'm going to park that. I'm going to do the third one of legality. This is primarily for pauper. So if a card is printed at common when it used to be an uncommon, that means it becomes legal in pauper, a format where you can only play common cards. Cards. Pauper is a very interesting and powerful format. It's not like you're gonna play really shit decks that are gonna bounce off of each other for like an hour at a time. No, Pauper is full of combo and like powerful Tron decks and all sorts of nonsense. So cards getting downshifted to common can be very exciting for people that play Pauper in Paper or on Magic the Gathering online. Not so relevant for today's thing, but it's, it's relevant to the whole conversation of upshifting or downshifting rarities. Then we come to price, the third, the middle finger of my three fingered prong. Price is the reason that people are upset for the upshifting to Mythic Rare. So rares were more common than Mythics, although there's this weird math of where getting any one particular rare can be more common than a Mythic if there's more rares in the set, but I'm not going to go too into the weeds of that. But either way, Mythics are the rarest card, then rares, then uncommons, then commons. Very easy, basic thing to understand. And that means there's less of them in the world. So then when we come to reprint a card that everyone wants, it's like Chronic Rift, 
If we put less of it, we put it in the mythic slot. Yeah, you can see where I'm going with this. It means the Cyclonic Rift's price isn't going to get hit so hard. So Cyclonic Rift at the moment is around $30. The reason for this being is that it's incredibly popular in Commander. I say this, is slightly below 30 It was 30 at the beginning of the week prior to the reprint announcement. I did a video mentioning it in a short, and now it's around $28 at time of recording. By the time this video's out, it may have got tumbled down more, as people are aware that it's coming, and thus it sells for a little bit less, because there's going to be more supply to meet the demand. However, if it's pretty rare, I mean, there'll be more coming to circulation, the price will be hit harder because there's more copies to meet the demand. It's economics 101, baby. It's supply and demand. I'm your teacher. There'll be a test at the end. The test will be whether you like, comment, and subscribe, or perhaps subscribe to my Patreon. Yes, it's going to come up on screen now. Patreon.com forward slash present Kenobi. Give me $2 a month and I'll call you a cunt on my Discord. So Psychrift could have been upshifted because of the limited environment. Guardian Project very evidently wasn't. When I saw Psychrift was upshifted, I was like, yeah, okay. There's a limited argument here, the argument they often make. But Guardian Project is pretty bollocks and limited, if we're honest. Put it to Mythic is insane. They are both clearly put to Mythic for a fourth secret reason. Or let's say a 3.5. Price and a half. The secret sub clause. I'm really losing this bit. If Wizards reprint less of them, it keeps the price high and therefore it's a desirable card to chase in future packs. This is a concept that I've talked about on the channel, but it's like a theory within the community called reprint equity. Reprint equity is the idea that there is a collected amount of value in the desirability of cards in the secondary market. If the market were to crash and everything was reprinted into the dirt, there'd be no equity to draw upon for future releases. You can't entice players to buy packs to chase a chase rare if there are no chase rares that are desirable to be chased. Yeah, it gets a bit philosophical. Chasing the chase when there's no chase to be had. So the real reason both these cards are mythic in this circumstance is to keep them expensive, which is a shame, really. I've kept saying this, but I think play pieces should be cheap. Collectible pieces, pieces should be expensive. Doing a thousand and one border treatments with nothing special is not creating the collectible environment for the alt arts that you probably should be. But this really weird situation where there's like three versions of every fucking card in Magic, and all of them are around the same price point. And that doesn't, isn't, it crashes the price in some stuff that no one wants to play, but as we see with Psychrift and Shieldred, they just keep maintaining this really high price tag that makes the game somewhat inaccessible to new players. The pack for example is really funny because I got angry on Twitter saying, look, if any card should be upshifted to Mythic to avoid people opening consistently in drafts because it's a bad time, a bad experience, and a very RNG, low skill bullshit for draft, it's fucking pack rat. But it turns out this, they, those two special treatments that are available in Collector and sometimes in Play Boosters occur less often than the normal Mythics and stuff. So there's a technicality where although Pack Rat is a rare in terms of a gold little set symbol on the card, it's actually going to be less common than a Mythic. So now we're getting to the stage of the alternate treatments where I don't know where anything's from or what things are and I see cards and I don't recognise them. We're now at a point where rarity symbols don't really tell you how rare anything is. And this has always been the case ever since they've done special alternate foily fancy bullshit, right? Zendikar Expeditions, for example, in this case Misty Rainforest, is a mythic, as is Zendikar Rising's Expedition. But the Zendikar Rising Expedition is approximately a tenth of the value, right? Like a Zendikar Expedition is around $250, and this on the right here, Zendikar Rising Expedition is around $40. Because Zendikar Rising Expeditions were way more common, in spite of them both being mythics. Frames and weird treatments, buy boxes, alternate arts, different languages, there's all different things that make things more rare than others. So I'm not I'm not clutching my fucking pearls about these changes to magic. I'm just pointing out it's really funny that in this circumstance, you just don't know what the fuck is going on. What, what direction is up and who is left? Ultimately, variety shifts can have a utility case in terms of changing the legality in a format like Pauper or changing how a limited environment plays, like stopping you getting psych grifted so often in draft. But in reality, let's not fool ourselves. These upshifts to Mythic are done to maintain the price tags of these chaseable secondary market desirable cards. And it's funny, because Wizards supposedly don't acknowledge the secondary market. But Sightgrift and Guardian Project were fucking dollar rares before the Commander boom. And now, they're suddenly up checked to Mythic, because everyone's playing Commander. I hope you found this video at least a little bit informative or interesting in terms of getting your brain cells going about why Wizards do what they do, or teaching you if you're a new player about rarities and rarity upshifts, downshifts. I guess sideways shifts? Is the, is the pack rat thing? No, that's an upshift, right? It's a technical mythic mythic or something. I've been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. Don't forget there's a Patreon link down below. Don't forget if you're buying something cool stuff, ink, get that sick orc token too. And I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.